All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we are going to be checking out some spoilers, okay? We are going to be looking at some spoilers in today's video, so I'm giving you a fair warning up front. Um, that is going to be pretty much the entire bulk of this video because there is a card that has been spoiled very recently, the card you see on the screen here with, uh, ten, uh, you know, excuse me, Charlotte Lin Lin and Kaido. The card is so strong, we, we're going to have to talk about it. And we're also, well, okay, let me give you a quick layout of the video. First things first, in this video, we're going to be talking about a few new cards, not just the, uh, the uh, two cards you see on the screen here. We're going to be talking about, I think, three new cards and then a few older cards that are going to synergize very well with what we're seeing on the, on the uh, screen here. And then we're also going to look at two different games from the East, little snippets of games from the East, from content creators who have already proxied up these OP08 cards and have kind of messed around with them. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to link them down in the comment section below if you want to watch their full videos. I just want to kind of show the board state. And we're going to talk about some things. There's a reason I chose uh, this title, To Infinity and Beyond, because, guys, this is pretty much an infinite combo. And we'll talk about that as we get to it. It's not literally combo in the sense of, like, like in Magic the Gathering, where it's like once you perform the combo, the game just ends. It's not quite that, you know, combo-esque. But you'll, I think you'll see what I'm saying. It creates a board state that continuously protects itself while destroying your opponent's side. And there's only going to be a, there's only going to be a few ways to get out of it. And we'll talk about that as we get to the video here, as we get into the video. Uh, and then finally, we'll end off with a game on the sim. Got to have a game on the sim just for good measure. It, it'll be fun. It's going to be a red yellow Saba game where I'm running like a straw uh, straw hat pirates. White beard variant, just one fun little game on the sim, and we'll we'll wrap up the final thoughts. So, guys, you know what you're getting into. Let's go ahead and dive into this. OP08 spoilers incoming. If you do not want to see any spoilers, now's your chance to back out. So, all right, let's go ahead and get straight into this. Uh, first and foremost, guys, um, we got to talk about this card. Oh, and by the way, we might also talk about the new Rayleigh card. I've already warned y'all about some spoilers, and that is what we're going to be getting into today. So, we might have to talk about Rayleigh as well. But that'll be at the very end of the video, if I, if I even remember. So, first up, this is the new character. Pause it, read it, memorize it, study it. This is uh, probably going to be a meta-defining character. If I, I, I didn't mean to say leader. Um, <clears throat> if I said leader, I meant character. Sorry, guys. But yeah, this new character right here, a 10-cost, 12,000 power character. It's four emperors, animal kingdom pirates, and big mom pirates searchable. And get this, guys. When attacking Dawn minus 10, or minus 10 Dawn, however it's worded correctly, KO all other characters, just like the 10 cost Kaido, right? But then, then put up to one card from the top of your deck on, on your life pile, and or on the top of your life, and trash up to one card from the top of your opponent's life. So do you see what's going on here? Yeah, that's kind of a weird translation, but hopefully you understand what's happening. This is a combination of Kaido, the 10 cost Kaido that KOs the entire board, and the 10 cost Linlin that lets you gain a life and your opponent trash a life. Extremely a powerful effect, and it's not on play, guys. It's whenever this character attacks. Okay, now some people might be thinking, and, and you know, trying to think ahead, like, okay, but, but that's Dawn minus 10, and you destroy your entire board, right? You destroy your whole board and your opponent's entire board. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. First, let's tackle the Dawn minus 10 issue. We're going to tackle both those issues I just said in, over the next few slides. So Dawn minus 10. Well, well, man, that's that's a lot. You only get to use that ability like probably once a game, right? Probably not. Okay, first of all, everyone already knows what this card does. You know, a card like this uh, can help you get Dawn back, but it doesn't really help if he gets KO'd, right? And the same thing with this new card down here, Charlotte Pudding. This is a new card coming out in OP08 as well. It, it's a miniature version of the five cost Eustace Kid. Three costs, 4,000 power, 1k counter, and then during your turn, once per turn, when your Dawn is returned to your to your Dawn deck, set up to one Dawn from your Dawn deck onto your field rested. Uh, this one comes into play rested versus this one comes into play active, but you see what's going on. It's like a three cost version of Eustace Captain Kid. But this is the big one here. This card is about to be a staple in any deck that runs purple and has Dawn minus shenanigans going on. First of all, it's a three cost two K. It's a three cost two thousand power and two K counter. So it's it's very low cost, and it's a two K counter. It, it's just incredible in that regard. You're probably not going to do a lot of attacking with it, but if you need to attack, attach three dawn and go at it. Right, just go go to, you know start going face. But that's not really what this card's for. This next effect here is what this card is for. Activate main once per turn. If you have no other Black Maria. Add up to five Dawn cards from your Dawn deck, rested, 
Then at the end of your turn, return Dawn cards from your Dawn field to the to the Dawn deck until the number of Dawn cards on your field is equal to the number on your opponent's field. So do y'all see what's going on? Dawn minus ten, huh? Okay, well we can just play Black Maria and get ten or excuse me, get five Dawn in one turn. And as long as your Dawn is less than your opponent's Dawn from that effect, then you don't have to return any Dawn. And you, you see how powerful that... Hopefully you see how powerful that is right away. And we're going to look at an example in a second in a live game showing how powerful that is. But okay, but you know, that that's nice, right? You know, very cool, Vivi. But how are we going to protect these cards from being KO'd by the leader's effect? Well, I'm glad you asked, right? It's going to be in a black-purple deck running this leader, which I'm going to come back to this leader, actually, but i got to show you guys. There's going to be a nice little combination of cards here that we're going to be able to run in a black-purple leader deck in Sabo and Monshri. Hear me out. Five call Sabo here. We know what this does, right? Your characters cannot be KO'd for the turn. Okay, well, that's nice for one turn, right? But what about the next turn and the next turn and the next turn? You just let it get KO'd. Like when your opponent loses their entire board, now when they go to attack, you know, into you, just block with your Sabo, let it get KO'd, and then bring it back every turn with Monshuri. And if, you, if you're thinking like, yeah, but this has to return two cards every time, well, don't worry, Sabo provides two cards to the trash every time. So you see how this becomes basically a totally self-sufficient uh, board state of just infinite value. Do you see what I'm saying? And it, I, I don't want to call it like an infinite cycle. It's not quite the same thing. There will be ways around it, but th hopefully y'all see what's going on. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them down in the comment section below. This is the leader we'll be running it through. His name is King. He comes out in OB08. All this, you know, a lot of the stuff we've seen is OB08. It's a standard 5,000 power four life leader, Animal Kingdom Pirates type. And then activate main, uh, main, excuse me, activate main once per turn, Dawn minus two. You can, if you have five or less cards in hand, you can draw a card. That's just incredible, right? But then it also has the utility of give up to one of your opponent's characters minus two cost for the turn. The second part is not as important in the kind of deck that we're building right here. But the first part is, because Dawn minus two, drawing cards, that's a very, very big deal. It's going to help us out big time. Okay, so now, now that we got through that part, now we're going to check out some games that happened over in the East already. Like, I mean, I think this happened yesterday, and I will link these full games in the comments section below if you want to check these out. Okay, let me move my face for a little bit. So, well, actually, my face isn't really in the way. I don't, I don't know. If you want to see their hand, let me, let me move it anyway. Uh, face cam, I'm going to turn that off for a second. And let me, let me just show you guys the board state real quick. So on the left here, notice where my mouse is. He's running the new king leader. And he this is a purple and black, or excuse me, what am I talking about? This is the alt art for that leader. It looks really cool. Very nice. Now notice the board state. He's going against Enel. And he has the black Maria on the board. He has the 10 cost Kaido and Lin Lin. And then he has the uh, two Sabo blockers. Now watch what happens. I believe he just passed the turn. And it's about to be the Enel's turn to play. Okay, I'm not going to put this in 2x speed. We're just going to watch it normal. I think I recorded it in 2x speed, actually. So swing 9, block, swing 10, block. He played out the um, Yamato just to gain a life because he knows what's about to happen here. Now watch this, guys. Play out, that's the new pudding card, right? That, or excuse me, the new like Eustace Kid style card. Play out Monshuri. Play out the, the, the um, that was all 9 Dawn. Hang on, let me pause real quick, guys. So it was 3 for the pudding, 1 for the Monshuri, and then five for the uh, Sabo. That's nine Dawn altogether. And now his entire board cannot be KO'd. Okay, now let's see what happens. He's going to swing five first. And then he's going to activate Monshuri to get the effect. Wh whoops, he almost messed up there. He almost did like a draw two trash two. But no, it's like return two to the bottom. And he's going to get a si Sabo back. Now, swing with leader. Or excuse me, swing with the new character. Dawn minus ten. KO your entire board. And, and you have to trash the top card of your life, and it's a 12k attack coming in, okay, and he trashes a card, uses the NL effect, uses Onigashima, okay, hang on, so many things are happening right now, okay, right there, let me go back, so after that attack, remember, that was a two damage attack, guys, this effect made him trash, made his opponent trash a card from the top of his life, made him gain a life, and now he's still coming in for 12,000 power after wiping his entire board, and then watch what happens, let me, oops, let me uh, do that. Okay, he takes he ta that life got trashed. Now he takes this one, uses the leader effect to refill it. Now he gets a dawn back from pudding, so plus one dawn there. Okay, Onigashima gives another dawn, and then plus five from the Mar the Black Maria. He is back up to seven dawn after a dawn minus ten in one turn. Guys, now n now 
in the the next turn here, let me uh, go here and pause it. There we go. For the Kaido, or excuse me, for the Anel player's next turn, he's probably going to swing six to seven into the Monchery. And it doesn't matter, right? Let me bring my face back. Okay, it doesn't matter that he's going to swing into this Monchery because you just block out with the Sabo. And now you do the exact same thing next turn. Now you might not be able to, actually you probably will be able to do a leader effect next turn, right? Because he got up to seven Dawn there. Because he got one back from, um, excuse me, one back from Pudding, one back from Onigashima, and then five back from Black Maria, getting him to seven. So now next turn, he, if, if he needs to, this is if he needs to do it, he'll go up to nine Dawn and then he can Onigashima for the turn to get to 10 and do this character effect all over again. And he still had nine Dawn to play with that turn to play out another Sabo if, if the Anel player played more cards. Absolutely incredible. And I will link this game in the uh, comment section below for those who want to follow out or, and see how the game goes. Uh, very good stuff there. Now I've got one more, also from the East. Uh, let me pause and kind of explain the board state since we're like right in the middle of this game. This is against Bonnie. Okay, and the Bonnie has a Cavendish, a um, Basil Hawkins, uh, this guy here, Urush. Can I leave my face up? Yeah, y'all can still see just fine. Uh, and then uh, Jewelry, uh, the, the five cost Bonnie. And the, ki the King player has just untapped for the turn. He's at 10 Dawn. His uh, 10 cost uh, Charlotte, Linlin, and Kaido has been on the board so he can attack this turn. Let's see what happens here. Okay, play. He's going to pay out, it looks like two, or excuse me, three for Black Maria. He's going to tap five for a Sabo. Now his whole board's protected. Now this list did not have the Monstery in it, or if they did, they didn't have it for this example. But look what he does. He's going to play that out. He's going to, So he played out the Sabo, draw two, trash two. He got rid of those cards. Swing for 12, use the, the character's effect to KO everything on the opponent's side of the board, except for Basil Hawkins, obviously, because that card uh, cannot be... Instead, he, let me pause it real quick. Sorry, guys. For those who are not aware, Basil Hawkins says anytime your opponent would, once per turn, anytime your opponent would cause Basil Hawkins to leave the field, you can instead rest one of your opponent's characters. So he in, he used that effect to save his Basil Hawkins and to tap down the Black Maria so that he can attack into that next turn. But bad news, right? He has a five cost blocker here and a five cost blocker here in Sabo and Eustace Kid to, to prevent those attacks at Black Maria to protect it. Okay. And then, so now, swinging for 12, you lose, a, uh, you trash your top life card, I gain a life card. Uh, now, okay, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of in-between actions going on here. He, so, let me back up just a little bit, guys, because the leader did not get to use the win attack, when your opponent attacks effect yet, and he rests down the five cost, used his kid with that effect. Very, very intricate line of play going here, where... The first thing that happened is the attack from the 10-cost um, character, which KO'd the entire board. It tried to KO the, the um, Basil Hawkins, but it could not. That resulted in the Black Maria being tapped. Now, on that when attacking, it trashed the top card of his opponent's life and made him gain a life. Then, the Bonnie resolves where he, he, you know, the Bonnie player gets to tap one Dawn to tap one of his opponent's characters or leaders. And that's what just happened there. So let me go and let, let it play out. Okay, so there's the trashing effect. Now there's the Bonnie effect to tap down the Eustace Kid, and now he will just take the 12k hit. He doesn't block out Basil Hawkins. Okay, and now, um, excuse me, uh, Onigashima gained a Dawn for the turn. He gained a Dawn active with the Eustace Kid's effect, and now he's going to return five more Dawn with the Black Maria. Do y'all see how powerful this combo is? Next turn, rinse and repeat. We'll play another Sabo out for five and do the exact same thing over again. Very, very potentially powerful. Excuse me. So now let's talk about a few ways we're going to be able to get around this effect. Uh, how are we going to play around this? It just seems broken, right? Well, it's not totally broken. So first and foremost, let me move this so I can see where, where my head is and make sure the... the okay, y'all yeah, can see just fine. Just make sure the recording's okay. So the first thing we have to look at are some answers. Whenever the 10 cost card is played out, that is a very vulnerable turn for your opponent because there's one card that just deals with it right away, Right? And it is, okay, I don't know why it came up with all this. Let me go to, what was it, OP04? I don't, I don't know why it came up with all these cards when I typed in Red Rock. There we go. This is like the immediate go-to answer. Sorry, we're on the, uh, the Asian uh, version of One Piece, but it has the English translation right here. Six cost, just literally get rid of any character in the game, right? Bottom deck them. So this is going to be your number one go-to answer. Let me, let me blow this up. There we go. This is your number one go-to answer is any deck that's running blue in the future in OP08 is probably going to have to run a card like this. It'll it'll just be mandatory to deal with certain cards like that unless that deck ends up not being strong enough to deal with like a red purple law like maybe it'll be too slow. We'll have to see. But if you're running any kind of blue, 
Gum Gum Red Rock is a quick, easy answer to that card. Second is going to be Rigo, or I think it's called Kingdom Come, I think is the technical name for it, the, uh, the, the technical translation, which is in EV01. Yeah, here we go. This card right here is another answer, because remember, they can't play the 10 cost Kaido and a Sabo in one turn. So there will be a turn of vulnerability where when that card comes into play, you're going to be able to pop it with Kingdom Come. Right, that's, that's like, this is a huge answer to the card as well if you're running yellow. So blue has an easy answer, yellow has an easy answer, and honestly, so does black now in OP07. For those who are not aware, there's a card coming out for um, the black card pool. Um, wait, did I uh, not spell it right? I don't know how to spell it. Oh, I'm in yellow, of course. <laughs> I, I, I was, I'm pretty sure I had that spelled correctly, but I was in the yellow card pool. Here's your answer if you're running any deck that runs black. Again, the turn they play the Kaido down is a vulnerable, vulnerable turn for them because they have no way to protect it. It costs 10 Dawn, so boom, that's their whole turn is dropping down a 10 cost body. Stussy is a very good answer to that. Now, if they ramp to it, it gets a little complicated, right? It, become, it, it becomes a little difficult if they ramp to it. Then you might have to combo like Ice Ages with cards like... Um, Probably even something like uh, Ice Age plus six cost Sakazuki might re-enter the conversation just so you can hit a nine on that alone, like an Ice Age plus Sakazuki, and then may maybe with a leader attack hit him for the you know the final ten dawn that you need to hit the character with. Uh, but but otherwise, if if they don't ramp too crazy like with Onigashima stage, playing out Stussy, you can very easily pop their their any any character with this card. So that's going to be the answer for Black. Um, red is going to have more of like a pseudo answer. Um, I, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but there is a, uh, a red card. You're going to have to wait for the card to the character to attack first or something, and then I think you'll be able to lower its, its power down to zero and pop it from there. But this one's the least, um, how do I say it? This one is the least practical because if they play out Sabo, then you're probably not going to be able to KO it, and if you try to attack into it, they're just going to block. You see what I'm saying? So maybe there will be some kind of way to go like Ain plus Diablo Jambe. I'm just trying to give an answer for every color pool, guys. Y'all bear with me. Uh, purple does have an answer now. If you're not running the mirror, there is a, uh, a new card coming out for purple. It's, it's actually out now, I even in the West, in EB01 called Ragnarok. Or let, let's see what it's called. Oh, it's, it's, I'm in uh, red. Let me go to purple. There we go. I believe it's called Ragnarok. I don't know. We'll, we'll, let me find. Um, we'll find it this way. This card right here. Oh, Conqueror of... of Three Worlds Ragnaraku. Excuse me. So it's Ragnaraku, whatever. <laughs> this is going to be able to hit an eight or less. But if you can, you know, if you're running any kind of purple with black in it, then you'll be able to easily lower the cost down by two and take it out this way. But other than that, I'm trying to think. Maybe um, other than that, I'm not sure if purple has a direct answer. However, they're literally running Kaido as well. So they have the same kind of card pool. So if they play out their Kaido and then you play out your 10 cost Kaido, then you should be able to pop theirs with the effect, right? So that, that's very powerful as well. Uh, then what's left? Green. Green will have to just t keep the character tapped, right? If, if you can keep the character tapped down in some way, shape, or form, like after they attack with it first, then drop down like a Doflamingo or some type of card that can keep it locked down, that's probably Green's uh, best way to deal with it. So that's about it. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about that, about, the, um, about this new character. Let, let me go back to it real quick. Um, bring up the slideshow. There we go. I want to know what you guys think about this this character. Do you think it's broken? Do you think, like I said, I tried to give an answer from every color pool so that you can deal with this kind of card. Um, because I do think this card is extremely powerful. Obviously, it, it, it is extremely powerful. We, we saw two you know, like live examples. But I don't think it's broken. I've heard some people talk about like like this might be broken. This might break the game. It's like it's like basically an infinite combo of, of just constant value. But we're actually at a point in the game where there are probably answers to this. Now, I will say, I do think this is a meta-defining card. Because I think Black Purple King is going to be a very powerful deck. And it will have answers throughout the game. And if it establishes this and the Sabo to get that whole Wombo combo going, where it's like, especially if it's going, if it has the Black Maria and the Monchery down. And think about it, guys. That's not very hard to pull off. Because once you drop this card, the Kaido and Linlin, they have to answer it that turn, for the most part. Unless they're blue. Blue can bottom deck later. But they have to answer that turn. If they cannot answer that turn, and, and you've probably been ramping the entire time too, if they don't answer that turn, then guess what? With nine Dawn, they are going to drop five cost Sabo, three cost Black Maria, and one cost Monchery. And now there it is. It is it is going, it is in motion. You know what I mean? 
because that's a nine dawn turn and then use one dawn to use the monstry effect swing with your leader use the the this guy use the uh kaido and, and you're off you know you're off to the races um also i want to i want to ask you guys this is there another deck that this might be really good in like obviously it won't be as good as in like a purple black deck where you can protect your own characters but what else do you think this might be good in like does anyone think this might be good in like maybe purple yellow uh, pudding maybe right i'm not sure like maybe if you're not worried about you know playing out characters for the turn or who knows you guys tell me what y'all think but i think generally speaking i do think that purple and black is the best way to run this because of the interaction with Sabo and Black Maria, like you can protect them all in one turn. It's just so massive. And then it gets you all your Dawn back. Really good stuff here. Okay, so we're going to check out, let's check out one more, um, you know, one more um, card. We got to check out Rayleigh. Okay, this is my, you know, this is basically like my favorite um, character in One Piece. If you're on the Discord, which if you need the Discord link, it's in my, um, I think it's in the About Me of my channel, my YouTube channel. Uh, my my title in um you know in the Discord is Rayleigh. It's 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 been my favorite character ever since I started looking into One Piece, and um we got to talk about the new the new character a little bit. And you guys tell me tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. I was a little bit disappointed. That might be an understatement. Anyone who was uh, talking to me last night knows I was I was very disappointed, but I, I was a little underwhelmed. Let's talk about it, and, and you guys help me figure out a way to make this this character cook right. You guys. Help me find a way to make this character busted. So Silver's Rayleigh, red character, uh, OP08, of course, secret rarity. 8 cost, 8,000 power, slash character. I was already disappointed with that, the 8 cost, 8,000 power. Like, at least give him the 8, 9, right? Give him give him the uh, the Gecko Moria or the Isho stat line, please, at least. Former Roger Pirates, that's pretty much worthless as far as searchability goes. And I, I understand. I understand he is a former Roger Pirate, you know, but I'm saying, like, we didn't get any help there. We didn't get any help from the, from the searchability, at least not yet. We'll have to see how the future is. Uh, but then on play, choose up to two of your opponent's characters until the end of your opponent's next turn. So it's going to last throughout their turn. Give one character minus 3,000 and the other minus 2,000. Power, of course. After this, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 3,000 or lower. So the first two things that come to my mind is going to be the new red blue uh, marco and i'm sorry guys i don't have a slide prepared for the new red blue marco leader but i believe red blue marco goes um minus uh 2000 for the turn and then you get to you get to look at your top card in a range you draw your top card and then from your hand you put a card on the top of your deck or the bottom so it's like a scry draw arrangement ability and but it gives minus 2000 so is, is it my, it's either minus two or minus three thousand i can't remember exactly but the idea is, okay, if you give something minus 5,000 power for the turn with this character's effect, you'll be able to hit an 8,000 power character. And I'll actually look that up real quick while we're um, uh, while I'm waiting for it, because I don't, I don't want to be wrong with that. I think it, it's either minus 2 or minus 3,000. All right, sorry guys, y'all give me just one second, because I got it over here on the right. Excuse me. Because it is actually relevant. We, we do have to confirm this real quick. I do apologize. Okay, let me get down to Marco. Do, 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 just flying down here. There's King. I got to be getting close. There's Marco. So for the turn, he does give, he gives minus 2,000. So if you combo this, and actually let me just bring this over so you guys can see it. This is the new uh, Marco card here. Do, do, do. There we go. This is the new Marco card. Um, whoa, it just went crazy on me. Where did it go? There he is. So uh, I was trying to zoom in on it. Okay, that's fine. So can you see this? All right. Yes. All right. Just making sure, sure you guys can see it. This is a four life, 5,000 power leader, white beard pirates. Dawn times one, activate main once per turn. Draw one card, then place one card from your hand to the top or bottom of your deck. Then give one of your opponent's characters minus 2,000 power for this turn. So you can combo. So go minus 2,000 there, minus 3,000 power with the, the, the character's uh, Rayleigh's effect, and then pop 3,000. So altogether, that would be popping an 8,000 power character. Um, so... Unless I just messed up the math there. Y'all help me out. Because minus five. So I think that that would be able to hit quite a few characters. You know, 8,000 power or lower. But at the same time, it's also not great, right? That, that, that requires you to run that kind of leader. But the other leader I was thinking about with Rayleigh was maybe red, uh, red, purple, law. Because then you have this on play effect. And you'll probably be able to pop two characters with this effect in red, purple, law. Because theoretically... Right, you'll be able to minus three thousand power a six K character. Actually, hang on, let me see. Minus yeah, you you'll probably have to minus minus three thousand power to a six K character 
and you'll be able to bottom deck, bottom deck that with your leader's effect, and then you could minus 2,000 power to a 5,000 power character and pop it with this character's effect. So that's just, you know, that's one uh, way of thinking about it. But uh, you guys help me out. Help me see, like, the light on this card. Maybe I'm just underwhelmed because I, maybe my expectations were too high. But to be honest, they really weren't. I'm not going to lie, guys. I, I'm not biased on this stuff. I judge cards the way that I see them. And I try not to have high, high expectations for cards. But uh, currently, like I said, I'm not head over heels with this character. Not saying he's bad. Uh, but I'm also... I was also wishing he did something different. I just wish it was some other kind of effect. I don't know what. But again, y'all help me out. All right. That's enough of that. Uh, let's also go on the sim real quick. Uh, let me go to... Where are the... We got we got one game to look at for Red, Yellow, Sabo running a white beard package. Pretty interesting stuff here. Uh, I call it uh, straw beard. Here we go. Let me blow this up. Let me put in 2x speed. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out Sabo, guys. This is like, you know, this has been my little pet project, my my pet deck for a while now, ever since ever since I started messing with it. There we go. All right. And uh, I, I really do think that this, this leader is underrated, and I think it should at least be A tier. But I don't know if we found the perfect list for it or anything like that just yet. So right here, like I said, I'm playing a Whitebeard Pirates version of the deck. I play out Haruda, who can give Rested Dawn to characters or leaders, just one per turn. And then I played out Garp earlier in the game. Red, Purple, Law, they, they, they got to go second in everything, so they're going to get to play out a nice four-cost card here and do a little combination. Let's see what he gets. And notice in my hand, while we're waiting for this guy to play out, because I do have this in 2x speed, I have two white beers in hand. I have Now I have two 2Ks. I have the little, uh, I just trashed the, the little ace, and then I have a Zoro. I just got the one-cost Nami. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to mess around with right now in Sabo, because I've seen decks that have been doing very well with Sabo run these cards, the one cost Nami, the two co cost Haruda, or soon the one cost um, Koala from Revolutionary Army, any kind of card that can move Dawn around seems like it will be very good in, in a deck like Sabo, because it, you know it's Dawn manipulation, we need one Dawn on our on our leader, and right here, I, so, I, so I played out the, the Zoro, smashed into what he had on the field, I moved all kinds of Dawn around, and then I was able to put the Zoro back in my life because he was at 7,000. Swing six with my leader, swing five with Haruda. I'm fine with him attacking into Haruda here because Red Purple Law can be very aggressive. Red Purple Law can be very aggressive, and none of my guys are safe on the board. Right, that's my logic. So if he swings five or six into my 5k character, I can just 2k counter out if I need to. But otherwise, you know, he can just bottom deck it with his, with his leader's effect. Now, he's going to swing 7 into it, and I'm just going to let that go. So that thing worked as like a 3k counter right there, because he swung so much into it. I play out another searcher. I think I'm running like 3 searchers in this deck. I think I'm running, um, uh, was that a whiff? Or, or did I get, no, I think I whiffed on that one. But I'm running um, Ezos, Garps, and uh, Nami searcher. I was just trying something new with this deck. Like I said, guys, I'm not saying this is like the best way to, uh, to play it. Just trying to explore some new ideas. My life is going up and up and up. And I'm just going to keep this pressure on. You know, he's giving me cards out of hand. I'm trying to beat up characters on the board. And, yeah, you know, I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now. Because think about it like this. If he doesn't start attacking my life more aggressively, I'm going to start dropping these nine-cost white beards that are going to make me harder to attack into. And they're just going to start eating up his, his board. Uh, one thing I will say, <clears throat> excuse me, is I do run a little bit of cost reduction, or excuse me, not cost reduction, power reduction in this deck. So I can hit some pretty decent sized targets with Whitebeard. Like for example, with Koala, I can hit a 6k target with his with his uh, when attacking effect. Okay, play this guy out. I'm swinging for seven. Your turn. You know, I'm, I'm a 7k leader now. He's going to have to invest a lot of Dawn to try to deal with me. And if he can't, you'll see what happens. This next turn, I think it's kind of funny uh, coming up here. So he's going to swing seven. Going to take that. That's fine. Because I do want to get my, my rush characters back. I got my, my uh, ace back. I got my what's his name, my Zoro back. I'm ready to start smashing him with these cards every single turn. Uh, the three cost Zoro, the five cost Rush Ace, and the, and the five cost Rush Luffy are so, so good in a deck like this. I need to take this, to be honest, so I can get down to two life. Now I can use my Rush, my, my rush um, yeah, Ace again. Because Ace is not, um, cannot rush unless you have two or less life cards. Okay, so right here, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking at the board state right now, and I like I already would have, would have done things differently now. I think what I would have probably done is used Koala to minus 3,000 the, um, the what's his name over there? The, uh, oh gosh, the, the Eustace Kid. Let me pause this real quick, guys. I'm sorry. 
looking back the way I would have done this turn, like this was fine too because I got you know I got to gain life. I my my leader's really big this turn. This is fine too. But looking back, what I think I would have done is I would have actually minus three thousand for two dawn minus three thousand used to skid. Attach to Dawn to my, um, what's his name? My Edward Newgate. Smash into the Reju, KOing the, um, the Eustace Kid. Then from there, it would depend on what he does. But that was that would have only been a four Dawn investment. I still could have attached one Dawn to my leader and played out Ace for, uh, you know, for five. And smashed in, put that back to life, plus 2,000 to my Newgate. There was a lot of different ways I could have gone about that. that. The way I did was fine but looking back i think i should have dealt with it a slightly different way okay no big deal though there's always more than one way to you know to do this Pl uses the shariah or even maybe take out shariah maybe shariah would have been a better target to take out with my uh, edward newgate and just not even worry about the the six cost kit over there so right here this guy basically throws a hail mary so he uh plays out the gordon notice what he does here my um what's his name my newgate is a 12k so now he did two of them to get him down to 6k. He did two Gordons to minus six my character. Then he played out a Reju. Like, notice, hang on. He plays out the Reju with one Dawn left, and he was hoping to get one more minus 3k because that would have put him at 3,000 where he could have bottom decked it and gone about the game that way. I wish he had not quit when he did because the game was not over right there. But at the same time, notice I'm a, I'm a 7,000 power leader this turn. He can't even attack enemy unless he wants to jeopardize his um, his uh, three cost guys there, the Shariahs. So, anyway, just a fun little game there. I'll, I'll show the deck list now, and I'll probably put that down in the comment section below as well. Uh, this is a list I'm still working on. It's not perfect at, by any means. This is not perfect. Let me move my head over before I forget. Uh, and I didn't even see this card in it. The nice thing about Luffy is he is super. No, or excuse me, he is Straw Hat searchable and Garp searchable, right? Because the 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 four, the one cost Garp. Let me put my glasses on so I can read that. Uh, look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal up to one Sabo, Ace, or Luffy card with a cost of five or less. So, yes, you, of course you can grab the two cost and five cost guys. The, that's what the whole entire, you know, Sabo and Ace and Luffy are built around. But you can also grab this three cost card, which is also a 2k counter. Nami can also grab both of these different Luffy cards, but not really much else. So, like, if I were to make any adjustments to the deck, I think I would actually get rid of these Namis because it can't even grab the one cost Nami. I, I guess it can grab Zoro, too. But hopefully you guys see what I'm saying. I think it would just make more sense for me to go, you know, the four Garps and maybe the four Ezos if I'm going to continue messing around with this Whitebeard version of the deck. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm still working on this. This is, like I said, this is like a pet deck that I've been messing around with. I'll be messing around with this probably for the rest of <laughs> OP07. So we'll have to see. And if you guys got any ideas, comments, questions, suggestions, y'all put them down in the comment section below, please. Well, guys, that's about it. Uh, let me go and put the patrons on here. I really appreciate everyone who likes the channel, follows it, subscribes, shares, all that stuff. It helps me out so much. Um, and, and not to let me let me also I'll I'll end on the the you know the I'll put up the title screen before I end. But real quick, thanks to my patrons: Asian Baca, Michael Powell, Tropical Bobcat, Van Buren, Pastor DG, Dragon Dragon JT, Optimistic Prime, Brian, Moonlight TCG for sponsoring me. You know, big shout out to Joey. And uh, just everyone, like I said, who watches my channel, likes it, subscribes, um, shares my stuff. I love it, guys. It's helping me out. You know, it's 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 awesome. I really appreciate it. Well, real quick, let, uh, to end on, let me uh, move this the, the patron thing out one more time, and we will throw up this to uh, to end on. Whoops, gotta zoom out. You guys tell me what y'all think. Remember, I know we're at the end of the video now. Let's not forget, I really want to know what you guys think about, let me, let me move my face. I want to know what you guys think about this crazy new character guys this this crazy crazy new character what are y'all's thoughts on it is it going to be broken i do think it will be meta defining but i think there's going to be more answers than people realize i'm done rambling guys thank y'all so much please not forget to like and subscribe if you have not already and um you know leave any comments questions suggestions you got down at the bottom in the comment section below if you have any and uh yeah till next time guys peace